Good evening. This is Cheryl Aronson with Schmooth Jazz Magazine. I'm with Senator Stephen Bradford, who put on this wonderful festival. Talk about how important this is to all of us right now. I, I think it's important not only to the community of Gardena, but like you say, the greater community of Southern California, LA County, the state, in light of what we've experienced over the last year with COVID. We had to do this virtually last year, and this is our 18th year live, but our 19th year since inception, and you saw the day, the crowd, they were enthusiastic, they were excited, they were happy to be back out. So we hope we did it in a safe and responsible manner. We required uh, vaccination proof, and we also had free vaccination. So hopefully people take advantage of that. And it's, it's a great community event, and we're happy we can do it again this year. Hi, Pat. Hi, Cheryl. I'm really stoked also to be here at the 18th Annual Gardena Jazz Festival. We're back. Uh, skipped it last year, of course, as so many other things were skipped. But it's great to see you. And you know, what do you think now is the future for jazz, smooth jazz, as we go into this kind of semi-festival? We can kind of have concerts. What are you thinking about this? I think jazz music is alive and well. Okay. I think it has survived all the bumps and bruises and will continue to do that. Yes. And festivals like these and a lot of the on land events and cruise events um, just bring the music, the artists and all their artistry to an adoring fan base. Yes. And I think that there is a, there, it's a grown folks party yes, where a lot is. of us are, you know, <laughs> we're at a stage in our lives where we really are still young enough to enjoy things but old enough to have accomplished enough so that we can be in all these places and yes. do all these things. Yes. And uh, I think the music is alive and well. It is. You know, yes. like you hear young artists like Darren Dean, who performed yes. here today. Yes. She's only 22 years old. I know. And she's incredible and yes. has a great wealth of knowledge of, of, of the jazz catalog, yes. you know, and also brings a contemporary flair to it, yes. too. Cheryl Aronson from Schmooze Jazz Magazine. Not only am I with the most talented, gorgeous Gail Johnson, she's also a very good friend of mine. I love her to bits. Gail, so nice to see you. So good to see you, you Cheryl. No, we haven't seen each other in a long time. Gail is playing with Norman Brown today. She is his musical director as well as a very wonderful keyboardist. Tell everybody about playing with Norman today at the Gardena Jazz Festival. Well, this is uh, really fantastic. You know, since the COVID, everybody's been on lockdown, so we're very excited to play, and uh, Norman's got a new band. You know, he moved to Atlanta, so he's got an Atlanta band, and, you know, those guys are great. Sam Sims on bass, and Phil Davis on keys, and uh, the world-famous Lil John on the drums. And so, uh, you know, we're going to get together and play Norman's music, his new single, Just Grooving, and all that, so... Oh, and okay, Just Grooving, so he has a new single out. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's from the new album. You know, uh, we're label mates now on Shanaki. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Heart to Heart. Yeah, oh, that's right. a new CD, so yeah, he's still doing it. <laughs> I know. Okay, and talk about Gardena Jazz Festival. This is amazing. Yes, uh, it's uh, the 18th year. Actually, it's 19 years, but we lost a year because of, right. you know, the pandemic, but... Uh, 18, 19, it'll be 20 years of Gardena's Jazz Festival. So we're very happy that uh, we can come to the neighborhood and do what we do, and we don't have to go halfway around the world. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here, Fernando Coleman, who has a fabulous big band. Fernando, tell everybody about your kids. Well, you know, I, I teach uh, free classes uh, in the community. We have 850 kids that we service, and uh, they, they, they uh, take classes for free. They do push-ups when they make mistakes, and uh, we have a lot of fun. Well, you have a big band, so we have horns, and we have a guitar, we have drums, we have a piano player. Talk a little bit about your musicians who are playing today. Well, they, they're all, I think the youngest age now is about four, no, 12 years old, and I think the oldest one is around 19. 
uh, and they, they work really hard. Like, you know, people, people don't know about what these kids are doing because they spend so much time emphasizing what the kids are doing when they're bad. And, uh, but these guys you take time out of their day. Uh, they, when they make mistakes, they do push-ups, they run, and then we, uh, we feed the community. Uh, we do cleanups, we do all kinds of things to connect them with their responsibilities. And why is music so important, especially jazz music? Well, I, I think, well, it's, it's us. It's, it's in our DNA, it's our soul. It's, it's a soundtrack to our, all, all of our lives. Gorgeous, beautiful Darren Dean, who sang her, you know what off. This girl can sing. You obviously, Darren, have studied the classics of jazz singers. Let's yeah. hear a little bit about your history. Man, I mean, I grew up. I'm from a musical family. My grandfather is Donald Dean. He played with Les McCann, Eddie oh. Harris. My cousin plays piano. He's toured with Kamasi Washington. His name is Jamel Dean. My father plays the drum. So. It's been a lot of just music growing up. Okay, so you go to the New England Conservatory or you are through their program? Graduated um, in 2019 oh, from okay. NEC, yeah. Oh, right before the pandemic right hit. Before the pandemic hit. <laughs> okay, yeah. so what happened after that? So the pandemic and then just a lot of really great music and just kind of taking a moment to reset but also revision and so I'm really excited coming out of it. I'm going to be singing with Dee Dee Bridgewater at the Detroit Jazz Festival Good. next month. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> September 6th, I'm sorry, 3rd through 6th nice. and uh, the LA Jazz Society with my project, The Resolution Tour. When is that? Um, that's going to be this Thursday, August 26th. Okay. And then I will be singing at the Central Avenue Jazz Festival, which will be live streamed September 8th with my family. <laughs> But times I want candies for all the time I'm old fashioned, I'm a minded It's hard to be as long as you agree to say Old fashioned with me I'm not playing the sex for y'all Break it all down I love my people man, break it down
Gardena. Gardena. I mean, how I like people been trying to get tickets for like two months and you guys sold out immediately, which yeah. means it speaks to the power of music. Um, thank God for the city, the municipality of putting something together that will connect the community, the music, and everybody understanding that we are one, no matter of political affiliation, socioeconomic background. At the end of the day, when I can look outside and see everybody just together and enjoying the beautiful spirit of music um, through Gardena making that investment, making sure that that happens in live music, I can not be no more than happy. Wow, thank you, Mike. <laughs> and performed at a few shows now. Can you tell everybody where you have been? Oh, yes. Since uh, May, I did a Cabo Jazz Festival and then Daytona in Florida. And uh, well, many places already I have been traveling. And just uh, when I stood at the, uh, on the stage and with a real audience and uh, seeing their smile, I feel like, Oh my gosh, and what the joy I had before. And I was just so happy and honored to dedicate music again. We are all so happy we can hear Keiko Matsui, which she will be playing at the Gardena Jazz Festival today. Keiko, tell everybody some of the songs we might hear and who is in your band. Yes, uh, today we have a special band and on drums, Dave Carasoni and uh, Rico Beret on bass, mm. and JP from Brazil on guitar, and Eric Marianzo on the saxophone. So, and uh, I'm gonna, only one hour we have, so I put uh, uh, my best selection from previous album and a new album too. You know, Keiko, you have been playing for a very long time as far as in the music industry. So talk a little bit and tell everybody, you know, how as a musician you feel what we're going into now, a new future of music? Well, um, of course, that um, technology uh, is great, 
that made uh, lots of uh, uh, inventions and uh, we can do concert uh, without being in the same room. But at the same time, I would like to um, care about uh, what's the, the original, um, how music was happened. It was made from the prayer and like spiritual era from Africa. It was dedicating the prayer for the sun or for the, for the vegetables and that kind of thing. So I hope that we can uh, keep that um, spirit. Yeah, spirit and um, mm, that the roots of the music. I love yes. That so I hope that we can keep that and um, and also I hope that we can travel safely and can see real audience front of me and dedicating my music front of you would be my yeah real dream
Magazine, and I am with the incredible Norman Brown. Well, thank you very much. I'm with the incredible Cheryl <laughs> Smooth Jazz Magazine. <laughs> We're so, keeping it down here in uh, I Gardena. Know you're yes. Are. You have so much amazing energy. Tell everybody how you do it, Norman. Well, thank you so much. I stayed grateful. Attitude of gratitude. <laughs> you know, we got the most powerful gift in the world. We were given at birth in the form of the power to control and direct our minds towards any means we desire. So no reason to be sad. Stop it. No, I agree, I agree. No yeah, so um, Gail, I, we talked to Gail and she said you had some a new CD and a new single. Let's hear about it. Well, yes, my current CD I made during the COVID time, right? We couldn't tour, we couldn't get out. Right. So I camped out in the studio and I made a CD called Heart to Heart. And the idea is let's share love to each other, y'all, and let's do it heart to heart now. It, it, you know, we are interconnected, we are interrelated, therefore we are interdependent. We depend on each other, man, so let's take care of each other. Okay, tell us a little bit more about the CD, who's on it, who's your band. Oh, good question. <laughs> professional over here. So, we got Paul Brown, oh, producer, right? Nice. And he plays some guitar yes, we with know me. Paul, of course. Jeff Warber, right? Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, the Mr. Wizard. Uh huh. We got Phil Davis, who plays with me, oh, played on the CD as well, nice. and wrote some tunes. And there's another person I'm trying to think of, Vassal Benfei. He's responsible for a lot of the R&B, early R&B artists, oh, Shantae okay. Moore and these people. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Big Dog is on the record. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing. Okay, we want to know where you're playing. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to see you in Cancun. You're doing the Cancun. Yes, I will be there, but where else are you going to be? Well, we got Memphis. We got uh, Pensacola, Florida. We got Atlanta, Georgia. We got Yoshi's up in Northern oh, California. Yeah, yeah. Cancun, as you mentioned. At Cancun, we'll do this again. <laughs> and wherever you want us to be, we'll oh, be there. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. You know, Norman, you've been playing, okay, we say a long time, but it's really wonderful. So talk a little bit about your career, what has made you so successful and so happy just to be a musician. That's a good, really good question, man. I, you know, first of all, the gift that's given to me to play this thing and make this music and this wonderful honor to have this music channel through me. You know, it's not my music, y'all. It's y'all's. But th that alone is a big deal to me. And I'm healthy. I have six beautiful children. Yes. Seven grandchildren. What? Seven children, I'm sorry. And uh, there's nothing to be uh, challenged with. Let me say that much. Because the problem is this. When we think about emotions, we don't know what they are. Emotions is really flat energy. It is. Emotion, energy and emotion. It's the personalities we put on them, like anger, right? sadness, and grief. That turns it into a negative thing, so I really work to stay away from that and turn it into some type of a lesson. Wonderful. You know what I mean? There's two things in life, lessons and blessings. Definitely. If you get the lesson, you got two <laughs> blessings. <laughs> wow. Okay. So let's, I'm just going to ask you a teeny bit more about going to your background. So when you were studying, you know, coming up with the jazz, who are some of your influences that playing the guitar? Yeah. Started with my brother. My brother Popsicle. I was eight years old. I slept in the room with this cat, bed across the room, and I never knew he played the guitar. <laughs> One day my mother let him set up in the living room, him and my cousins, they playing this music. Kids from the neighborhood looking at the window. It was like a street party, right? I was stuck. I was eight years old. So he left, they packed up, and I watched the way he put that guitar. And I grabbed it and I started playing it. And you could play it? Well, I, I was trying. Try and I'd sneak and do it every time he was gone. Uh -huh. So uh, about a year later, he busted me. <laughs> and he says, man, I didn't know you wanted to play it. Play it any time you want to play it. He bought me my first real guitar and popsicle. That was my big brother. Oh. So that was my first hero. Wow. And I was learning Jimi Hendrix. My father was a West Montgomery fan. Yes, West Montgomery. Yeah, we can hear that. You can hear that? Okay. Yeah, West Coast jazz. There, there you go. go. Uh -huh. And then my sister loved George Benson when he came along. Those are my heroes right there. And I just really picked up their sound. Moved to California, studied at the Musicians Institute. Oh. Became an instructor there. I was a teacher there for 12 years. 
and writing songs. And next thing I know, I was at Motown recording for their new Mojazz label. Thanks to Mr. Norman Connors and Steve oh, McKeever. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. And you also, of course, played with Rick Braun and Kirk Whalum. You were the guys. BWB. BWB. Yeah, yeah, Brown, Whalum, Brown, you know. We were at Warner Brothers together. The president, Matt Pearson, says, man, I'd love to hear you guys make a record together. Threw us in the studio, picked some songs, and produced it, and we came out with Groovin'. And we were a band. Yeah. So we made Groovin', did a tour. That was 2002. We went away. 20, I think, 8, 17, 16, we got back together. Yeah. We made the Michael Jackson remake album, Absolutely. Human Nature. Did a tour, played Africa and everywhere, and then we made one more. We made our first original CD, BWB, we called it. I know, I've seen, I saw you play, but you th again, you know, you guys have jazz in your background. Some yeah. straight ahead too, right? That's right, that's right. That's, what, that's the stuff we practice yes. to learn how to uh, well, play this instrument. Okay, bending down, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love traditional jazz, man. Yes. West Montgomery was blowing it away. Grant Green was my heroes, you know, guys like that. Joe Pass, yes. I actually got to study with Joe Pass a little bit. Wow. Yeah, learned some chord melody from Joe Pass. Ron Estee, man, Joe DiArrio, some great teachers that I got a chance to study with over at uh, GIT, yes. Musicians Institute. Yes. And so it's been fabulous, man. I just love to grow and learn. Okay, so we're going to say, what do you want to tell all those young musicians out there picking up the guitar? Make sure you love it. Yes. You make sure you love it and put your passion into it. Don't just learn to play the notes. Learn to express yourself. Mm. Express your ideas. Mm. Okay, the notes, they're just vehicles and vessels and elements. But it's all about what you have to say. Say something with your music. Thank you, Norman. <laughs>
Cheryl Aronson with Schmooze Jazz Magazine. I am with Eric Benet, the headliner of Gardena Jazz Festival. Eric, talk about being here tonight. It felt so good. You know, everybody is just like starving and hungry for some live music and, you know, jazz and R&B. That's, that's, that's a genre of music that just goes straight to your soul and just nourishes it. And that's exactly what everybody needed after being cooped up for so long. And it just, uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful night. The weather was in our favor. And, uh, you know, it's a Southern California audience, so, you know, it was off the hook out there. So I just had a lot of fun. Okay, tell your fans what you're up to. So, uh, it was one of those weird byproducts of COVID where I wasn't able to gig and travel, so I just started writing. It's something I wanted to do my whole life was screenwriting. And I actually wrote a script, and my very first script got picked up by one of the producers of Bohemian Rhapsody. Congratulations. And we're so, uh, we may start shooting that film by the end of the year. It may have to wait till next year. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, and I'll have music in it, obviously. Lots and lots of music. Lots okay. and lots of music. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. When I wake up in the morning, love And the sunlight hurts my eyes What? Something with my morning, love